actually the deal that I'm doing right now. I have a great relationship with the buyer. So my first deal mm-hmm. I got in Memphis, Tennessee is three hours away from me. And I just put it on Facebook Marketplace. I had no pictures, nothing. I have the street view of Google. And the guy was like, hey, I want to go check it out. And I just sent him directly to the property. The owner lived in Texas, so I knew the owner and that buyer wouldn't talk. So I just yeah. kind of trusted him and said, hey, here you go. And he went out to the property, he liked it, and he bought it. Um, section eight clients. Uh, do you get like a list of people? My name is Eileen, and um, I just recently. Okay. Okay. So think about your workflow again. You. I don't know how to do it. I know how to do it, and I'm trying to instruct other people to to do better in their business. But I also have to do better in my business. And, you know, the CEO says, how was Johnny reaching out during his first seven months, text blasting, direct mail, cold calling, and how many hours per week was he putting in on an average until he got his first deal? Before we go to that, just real quick, Tammy, she said she has my information. By all means, reach out to me anytime with any deal. I'm happy to look at it uh, from, from pretty much anywhere. So I don't know what market you're in. I'm assuming you're in the Detroit market because you're seeing my information, but please do reach out. Now we'll go back to the CEO's question about, you know, what kind of things were you doing yeah. um, during that? So, so during the seven months, it was all cold calling. And then I would call twice. If I don't answer, I would send cinema text. Like Johnny question mark. And we would go from there. So all cold calling, all hand, hand dialing is what I did. Uh, the the seven months kind of encompasses everything, but the time where I was in school, I was probably putting in 10 hours a week, not a okay. lot, just kind of free time, like, hey, let me just call this on market property or call this one list that I have. Um, but then after that, I was putting in probably eight to 10 hours a day, mm-hmm. so 70 hour weeks just to be, just to be good. Cause I was calling on Saturdays and Sundays. I was calling every day for that month and a half when I got out of yep. school until I finally got something on a contract. So, okay. you know, it, you know, I, not a lot in those first couple months cause I was in school, but once I hammered it home, probably like 70 hours a week for sure. So Timothy has a cold call from a dialer and actually he said, no, he was hand dialing. Is that right? Yeah. When I first started, I was hand dialing. I have a dialer now. I had a dialer in the past and then got away from it because it was just a lot with the foreclosures, but I have a dialer now and a dialer is by far the best thing in the world. Hand dialing is cool to, you know, get your first deal. But as soon as you have some, as soon as you close that first deal, dump all that money back into your operations and get a dialer. You you need a dialer. 100%. So uh, Johnny Stewart asks, uh, how do you deal with real estate agents who don't understand wholesalers and tries to interfere with your business? This is a great question. I want to hear what you say. That's kind of anybody else who has any questions that if you're watching the replay, please leave a comment. We'll try to get to them. Also, if you want Johnny to come back on here, leave a comment and let let us know. We'll have Johnny back on here. We'll dive, we'll dive deeper into everything, but I'd love to hear what you have to say. Cause maybe, maybe next time what we'll do is instead of doing this, I'll make a trip down to Tennessee and yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it live. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so but, side by uh, side, right? Yeah, most definitely. That'd be, that'd be, that'd so, be all right. So, we'll go back to the question. I'll read it again. Is about real estate agents and wholesalers, uh, them not understanding and tries to interfere with your business. So, this is a phenomenal question. Like I said earlier, I'm not too fond of agents. Uh, so, mm-hmm. what I do is I don't call properties that would be good for cash on market. I kind of got away from that. I call subject to properties, properties that'll be real good sub two opportunities. And the way I find that is I put it in a prop stream. I I just filter it down to on market 
and they have less than 20% equity. So I give them Got a call. Um, so pitching sub two to agents is something that can get my blood boiling a little too much. Um, <laughs> you, have, you have agents who are completely open to it. And uh, yeah, I'll run it by them. And then you have agents who are immediately, oh, my seller would never do that. Um, right. I haven't found an effective way to get them on my team to pitch my offer to them. What mm -hmm. I started doing lately is I'm sending them an offer sheet that requires the initial of the seller because an agent's fiduciary duty is to pitch every offer that comes through. Now, yep. that, as you know, that's not the case at all, especially with subject to because these agents aren't really well versed in it. So they don't want to pitch something that they don't know. Um, but my best phone call that I've had with an agent is we actually got on FaceTime and she took notes about everything that I was saying. And I told mm -hmm. her, I'm like, hey, I would love to get on a Zoom call with you and your seller so that I can answer all your guys' questions at once. That's how I okay. always try to attack it. But agents aren't really open to that. So, uh, Johnny, that's a great question. I, I don't have just a concrete answer. I don't have the best way to go about it. Um, I think it's one of those things where they're either open to it or they're not. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I don't I don't know how to you said we we don't convince. I don't know how to convince an agent that selling sub two is the way to go and how it will help a lot of their sellers. Uh, for example, right. I have one property in Clarksville, Tennessee. It's vacant now. He, he's an, uh, a soldier. He's a, overseas and he'll be overseas for the next 10 years and has a house in Clarksville that he bought six months ago that he cannot sell. And if he sells it, he'd have to cut a check. So mm -hmm. I told him, like, hey. I told the agent, I'm like, I will pay your commissions. I will give your seller $5,000 to take that home over subject to. Now, mm -hmm. that sounds like a pretty good offer. Com that agent has completely ghosted me. So it's one of those things you don't, you, you don't really know. They're either for it and they'll listen or they're not. And I haven't been able to convert that person who's not yet. Most definitely. And that's the biggest thing is, is that you need to figure out what works it, it is a case uh johnny stewart says it is a case by case and that's 100 percent true so case by case basis and i will take that is, is you have to learn how to read people and understand when you're explaining something to them that they're just in one ear and out the other and uh so i i come back to them and and we'll be like okay, you've had this listing for how many times, how many days? And you've had no offers, right? Okay. And this is assuming it's been on the market for say six months or, or, or almost six months and they're about to lose the listing. Yeah. Okay. So then you come back to them and be like, Hey, you know, I, my offer is still valid. I, you know, we're open to it. Uh, if you're, if we can get on, a call with the seller to explain everything and you know you will still get paid because that's all the biggest thing is is that a, a lot of them all they care about is getting paid that's they it. think what you're saying is like a scam to get further down the road and it's like no i want to get you paid you know? I, even, I even tell them initially in my pitch like the first thing i say is hey if i can pay your commission in full so that's yeah. the first thing that comes out of my mouth. I want to pay your commission info. I don't want you to take a lower amount. I want to pay you for your listing. And right. that's always how I how I go after that. That's the first thing I say. Mm -hmm. So you said you do everything virtual. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so have you considered going into different markets besides Tennessee? I've dabbled in Georgia because I have a good partner in Georgia. I've dabbled in Georgia in the Atlanta market. But Tennessee okay. and the Georgia market are kind of where I'm at right now. I've had, a, I, I taught one of my closest friends who's about to move to North Carolina how to pull the foreclosures in North Carolina. And I'm just kind okay. of his safety net in, in, that, yeah. in that market. But Tennessee and a little bit of Georgia is, is all I'm touching right now. Okay, awesome. That kind of answers Ms. Tammy B's question. Do you, do you, any of you buy out of state or consider it? So, um, you know, that's, that's another thing is that we, I don't buy right now because I'm a wholesaler. I will eventually buy. So, 
but we'll see what happens with that. So and, and just um, kind of just to bounce yeah. off of that, um, buying out of state, I will buy out of state, but I'll buy out of state in markets that I feel comfortable with and markets mm-hmm. that I would want to visit. Um, I won't right. just be buying anything just in random places. It would have to make sense for me and my goals moving forward. But buying out of state and buying outside of my wheelhouse is, is definitely to come. Most definitely. Oh, she says she she's near Raleigh. I actually used to live in Raleigh, awesome. near Raleigh. I used to live in Harbor Springs, North Carolina. So, you know, awesome. Um, so, yeah, you can do this. And then the D, like... The difficult part is, is for virtual wholesalers here in the Detroit area, it's very hard to comp inside Detroit. It's block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood. Okay. Mm, yeah. And they a lot of people don't know, so they they usually lock them up way overpriced. Mm. And then so that's why nine out of the ten deals that I look at from other JV deals are not deals at all. Really? So, yeah. Wow. So, you know, with that, um, yeah, so it's just, that's just, unfortunately, that's how it is. So I have to look at that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, the CEO says, let's talk about finding buyers. Are you on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist guy? Uh, is it always 10 days? Uh, you have it under contract or can you go 30 days? Great, great, great question. Uh, I'll go from the back to forth. You can do it as long as you want. As long as you and the seller agree, you can have the inspection as long as you want. I'm a, typically a 10-day guy. I've done one 20 days because they want the closing to be far out. So I was like, well, if you want that far out, then can we get an inspection, you know, 20 days? But I'm a 10-day guy. I, everybody gets 10 days. Because if you can't dispo a deal in about five days, you probably don't have a deal. Right. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm 10 days and that's it. Uh, as far as Facebook, uh, I've never done Craigslist. Facebook is my, my jam. I found every single last one of my buyers on Facebook. I found my first buyer on Facebook and I'll probably find my last buyer on Facebook. <laughs> it's it's one of those things. I've also gotten gotten, you know, duped on Facebook as well. So you got to be careful yes. um, and do a lot of vetting do a lot of vetting know who you're working with just so your deal doesn't get daisy chained around but but mm-hmm. know who you're talking to do a lot of vetting but that's how i found all of my buyers facebook i'm in countless amounts of facebook groups and uh, when i have something in a certain market i'll join the facebook groups in that market and i'll just go through the comments and see who's see who's doing deals see who's buying i'll see somebody post their deal and but like, hey did you did, did this one close who bought it so that's yep. how i kind of go about the vetting process but Facebook, Facebook, Facebook is where I found all my buyers. And we you know, of course, word of mouth and going yeah. to a couple of meetups. But Facebook is how I found my first one and it's probably how I found my last one. Yeah, I go to the whole, a lot of local meetups in the area. And that's how I, I started meeting a lot of my buyers. Um, and then when I started the Facebook group that we're live to right now, yeah. uh, I started getting a lot of buyers that way as well. So, but I'm always in the comments. I'm adding, adding value, adding value wherever you can. The biggest thing on Facebook is don't try to bring people down because people see that. Exactly. Okay. If don't bring negative comments. Oh, that's never going to sell that people will see that. Just, just leave it alone. Okay. Just, just leave it be. Now, when you see people saying, oh, I'm interested in a property that's near yours message them and Hey, I got one right down the street from there. Uh, you know, would you be interested in, you know? So, um, now Tammy brings up, a, a, another thing is, is do you pay for a home inspection? I do not. The buyer pays for that. And okay. I, at where I'm at now, most of my buyers are pretty seasoned. So they don't even pay for a home inspection. Um, I think if, if you were selling to a retail buyer, maybe a home inspection is needed, but a lot of these investors, they're not, they're not running home inspections. No, they're just having contractors run through them, you know? Um, but the biggest thing is, is that, you know, we're, you know, we don't get your traditional home inspection, like a, on the MLS, we say, okay, it's going to need this. It's going to need that. You know, uh, we walk through it and, and go from there. So um, now 
with that being said, do you walk through the, you said you do this virtually. So do you walk through any of the properties? Like how do you get photos? How do you do your marketing good? You know, like how, how is all that? Yeah. So my first deal and actually the deal that I'm doing right now, I have a great relationship with the buyer. So my first deal mm-hmm. I got in Memphis, Tennessee is three hours away from me. And I just put it on Facebook marketplace. I had no pictures, nothing. I had the street view of Google. And the guy was like, hey, I want to go check it out. And I just sent him directly to the property. The owner lived in Texas, so I knew the owner and that buyer wouldn't talk. So I just kind of trusted him and said, hey, here you go. And he went out to the property. He liked it, and he bought it. And this one now, uh, actually, before I even got under contract, I let him know. I'm like, hey, I can get this under contract at this amount. Um, He's like, hey, can you get me in there? I'd love to buy it. Just get me in there. So before a contract even got signed with the seller, I had him walk it. And that's that's how I got it. Um, I've yeah. hired some boots on the grounds. Uh, I got in Facebook, saw somebody in that market. I was like, hey, I'll send you a hundred dollars if you can get in there and take some pictures for me. And they've done that. So uh, I've come up with some creative ways to to do it. Um, but most of the time, a lot of these buyers they want to get in and look at it. So your pictures are cool, but they want to get in and look at it anyway. So I just tell them like, Hey, let's sign this contract at this amount. And I got a couple people who are going to come look at it. And it's, it's always worked out for me that way. 100%. So the, the thing is, is that I've done that a few times where I've talked with buyers and like, Hey, you can come look at it. You know, like basically we both walk through it at the same time. We walk outside the house. He tells me his price. Now I go negotiate it. You know, awesome. and those are the trusted buyers that you work with, Yeah. you know, um, so not every buyer is going to be like that. So you still have to be very, very cautious. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, but with, you know, the thing is, is that how I've worked is if, if the price is going to be like borderline what it needs to be, I actually need to go through there and, you know, I take photos like I'm walking through the property but then after I take the photos I I, after quite a little while of uh, learning this I actually also do a video and I walk through I do a video on my phone I walk through it with some commentary that way what I can do is I do inside and outside for video as well as pictures and now the buyer Basically, I, I let them know, hey, I want this just to be a formula for you to walk through it. Let me know what you need based off the photos, based off the yeah. pictures, based off the video. That should give you plenty enough to go by. You know, so yeah. and I, I've had people give me offers sight unseen because of that. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the, um, the, the deal yeah. that I did in my hometown um, the buyers actually live 30, 40 minutes away, but they were like, I want a house in that area. I don't even have to look at it. I'll buy it. So that's how that's how that one went down. So they didn't take a look at it. Um, mm. I sent a few pictures of the area and they were like, yeah, I'll take it. And, and that was that. That's awesome. So I definitely want to hear more uh, about the Tennessee market. What's good areas? What's good thing, you know, mm. um, places to go. So I uh, definitely want to hear more. So I do want to have you back or, we, you know, we'll do a, maybe an in-person yeah, you know, yeah, show sure, or something like sure, that. Yeah. Um, so tell me uh, just real quick, what are you doing in the future and what can anybody here listening, whether they're listening live or listening on the replay can help you out with and how can we, they can contact with you? Yeah. So, so wide scope, what I want to do is I want to build a wholesale business that operates without me. So at some point in the next three or four years, I want to completely remove myself, have an engine rolling and deals coming in to where I can start picking which deals I want to keep from my portfolio, which ones I want to fix and flip and go from there. So that's big picture. That's my goal. That's where I want to get to. Um, Guys, I got YouTube. Follow my YouTube channel, Johnny Stewart the Third. It's uh, three L's, I think. J- Johnny Stewart <laughs> and three L's. <laughs> yep. So uh, subscribe on there. Comment on my videos. Um, I have my link tree in the bio. Uh, it has my phone number, my email, I, every way that you can contact me. I'm on Instagram, uh, J dot Stewart two three. Um, just, just get at me. My phone number is very, very easy to find. It's on all my platforms. And 
but give me a call. Give me a call anytime. I have my phone right next to me and I love helping people. So at any point in time, if you have any question, if you need anything, please give me a call. I'll do my best yeah. to give you the right answers or help you find the find the right answer if I don't have it. So um, contact me and, and let's do some work together. Send me all your deals. Send me send me everything you got. I'd love, love, love to take a look at it. Awesome. Yeah. And again, his link tree is in the bio. It's one link and you can see all his social media, his platforms, everything, his contact info. So go ahead and click that on the link. Um, you know, if for some reason it's not or you're having trouble, make a comment. I'll, I'll send it right over. So no problem. All right. Thank you. Um, so with that being said, we are coming to the end of the podcast. I really appreciate all the comments, all the interact. This has been a very, very interactive yeah. episode. And because yeah. of that, we have gone over to, on time. Uh, usually this is only about an hour long, but it's been a little bit more than that. So we're uh, having really fun. Appreciate we're having it. Fun. Yeah. So um, the Johnny Stewart in the, if you go to the description, uh, there is the link for his contract for his link tree in the description. My information is in the description, but also my phone number is right here. You can always contact me. You can email me as well. All my information is in the description. Please go ahead and look in there. Happy to help anybody who wants to, who, who needs help. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Uh, and go from there. So uh, with that being said, we are going to There was once a day that I would pray for you. I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too. Sneaking looks up and down from across the room. Damn, what a hell of a view. I 